Hi everyone, welcome to MTG Oli. Today we're going to be talking about Fallen Empires, uh, one of my favorite magic sets. I think it's underrated and it's just awesome. So we're going to take a look at that today. We are going to do a brief set review in general. We're going to talk a little bit about the art and the artist proofs. We're going to talk a little bit about Fallen Empires and old school magic. And then we're going to crack 14 packs and see what we get. We're going to hope for some cool old school playable cards. We're going to hope for some cards playable in other formats possibly. And we're also going to look for misprints and printing errors um, and hope we get lucky. So, shout out to Gabby's Olympic Cards and Comics in Lacey, Washington. Uh, these dice commemorate uh, Gabby's 25th anniversary. They've been there since the beginning, and it's the just the best magic store you're going to find anywhere. So, shout out to them. I got this box of Fallen Empires there for about $162.50. Um, and they're just a great value. I think they will climb in price over time, even though uh, they've been steady for a long time. Uh, because they were so overprinted. However, still a cool um, thing to pick up if you can, if you like old school cards. Um, just a few things in general about the set. It was printed in November 1994. Um, it's on the plane of Dominaria with all the other old magic sets. Uh, there were 102 unique cards in the set 35 common, 31 uncommon, and 36 rare. Um, <coughs> Now, the cards were printed, many of them, with multiple artworks. A C4, for example, has four different artworks printed on the common sheet, and so that makes a relatively common card in the set um, because there were four of them on each common sheet. Uh, and there were also C3 cards, U3, U2. Uh, there was only one a C1 card. Uh, and then there's U1 cards, which are basically rares. So anyway, the set taught Wizards a lesson about overprinting. They kept printing them to 1998. There was a total print run of something like 350 to 375 million. And so um, that's why the price has remained low uh, even to this day uh, on this set from 1994. So. Uh, they were printed in Cartamundi in Belgium. Um, they, uh, there was a printing error. You can get uh, cards with Fallen Empires Commons on the front, and the back of the card, instead of Magic Back, is from the card game Wyvern, which Cartamundi was also printing. Uh, but you can't get those in Magic packs, you can only get them in Wyvern packs, and only from the Premier Limited Edition starter, not just any of them. So, they are hard to come by, but um, it's just a thing that's out there. So, let's move on. I want to talk a little bit about artist proofs. Um, it's a really cool way to collect cards from Fallen Empires, and they are much more rare, and so a lot of them can be had for not too much money, but there were only 162 of each of them printed, which is such a low number. Now, they have white backs, you can't play them in tournaments, but for a collector, um, 162 is just so few. Now, many sets have more um, artist proofs, so how do I know there's 162 in this set? Well, you can find it if you look it up on uh, artist proof pages, but also um, it's uh, some of the cards are numbered. For example, Kaja Foglio here. There you go. 86 out of 162. All right, moving on. There are a lot of cool cards when you're opening Fallen Empires packs. Uh, you're looking for Rainbow Veils, um, which. Uh, can be used to see when you use it, it goes to your opponent. So you can use that to force them to trigger land tax. You tap this, give it to them, it's tapped so they can't give it back, it goes to their turn, um, or I mean, it goes to your turn and you get to activate land tax. Um, there's a um, high tide, of course, is used in many formats. It's one of the Fallen Empires cards that. Uh, uh, transcends the test of time along with probably him to Torok. Um, 
Aola Pile is a great card. Um, good sideboard card in old school um, because it gets around circle of protections and um, cards that have protection from a certain color. White Knights, Black Knights, and so forth. Um, Goblin Grenade um, is the only Fallen Empires card in the Goblin deck, but it's just so powerful and uh, makes that deck much better in old school. Um, awesome. Dwarven Catapult is uh, another underplayed card, I think. Um, it can be really good. It's X damage divided evenly among all of opponent's creatures round down. Um, just kind of an interesting instant in old school. Let's talk about a few other cards. Um, so, a lot of people think Fallen Empires is just a fringe um, a fringe set when you're talking about old school. So let's just go into a couple of decks real quick that are primarily based on Fallen Empires cards. So, first we have Thrall Reanimator. Um, in addition to Animate Dead, you have Soul Exchange, which you sack a creature if it's a Thrall, um, well, sack a creature, reanimate a creature. If it's a throw, that creature gets plus two, plus two. So you get a breeding pit. Um, maybe you have a basal throw out. You could also use that to ramp. Um, but uh, you sacrifice one of your throws to reanimate something. Another creature from Fallen Empires that's good to reanimate is Deep Spawn. Um, if you use Soul Exchange, sacrificing a throw you're getting an 8-8 Trample with um, basically the old-school version of Hexproof. Um, you can use Mind Stab Thrall to help clear the way. Uh, it also is a Thrall to give that bonus with um, Soul Exchange. Lord of the Pit is a creature you probably want to reanimate with your Breeding Pit. Um, it would be a 9-9 Flying Trample, again, with the Soul Exchange. Uh, you can splash some other cards from other sets you to use as discard outlets, send bad, recall, you might note doesn't exile cards, you just discard them, so you can use it as a discard spell for reanimator. Uh, Jalem Tome, draw one, discard one, loot your things in the yard. So that's one deck that has a lot of Fallen Empires cards in the core. Here's a second one. Um, Mono Black, Rack. So um, in this deck, you can use even Stronghold to ramp out some mana. You can use Thrall Retainer to make your Hypnotic Specters uh, especially brutal and hard to deal with. You can use Initiates of the Even Hand from Fallen Empires again to power out Drain Lifes using your colorless mana like Strip Mines and Mishra's Factories and Sol Ring or what have you. Uh, him to Torak goes without saying, um, just obviously a powerhouse. Um, Liz Danforth signed this for me at the Seattle GP earlier this year, and she said that she did not have any artist proofs of this card because back in the day she didn't really know uh, that that would be a uh, valuable thing, and so she gave them out basically as business cards to people um, who bought other things pieces of art or what have you from her so and a lot of that's not common or I mean that's not uncommon it happened with a lot of art artists and artist proofs back in the day so some artist proofs you just cannot find um, because of stories like that so um, order of the even hand a great aggro creature um, you can splash some other really inexpensive cards to round out the deck um, and just Destroy your opponent's hand with him to Torok, Mind Stab, Thrall, Hypnotic Spectre, and then finish them off the, with the rack. So that's a couple of decks based on Fallen Empire's cards, and uh, let's crack some packs, see what we find. Um, I'm going to just kind of do this quickly today and uh, have some fun. So let's see what we got. Oh, got to. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, let's see what we got. And I'm going to be looking for um, spots or miscuts or other printing errors as we go. Um, from this booster box, we've already found at least three such printing errors. Um, whoop, upside down cards.
nothing great yet. Let's see what we got. Soul Exchange for the Reanimator deck. More upside down cards. Some of the Chris Rush art from this set really drew me into the game as a kid. I mean, just so cool. It's like from Spawn or something. All right, let's keep burning through these packs real quick. See what we can come up with. Now these cards, these packs are eight cards each. So if you want to draft, basically you just use two packs instead of uh, each, or in place of each one that you would normally use. Uh, you end up with obviously one extra card, 16 instead of 15. But uh, the power level is really low, so that's totally fine. Ooh, Elvish Farmer score. See, that's what I'm talking about with the Chris Rush art. That is sweet. All right, let's keep going. 14 packs. Goblin grenades. down there. Let's bust them out. Ooh, really pile. Good. For some reason, those are just very uncommon. I think this is the first one I've seen in this entire box. Here's a Fallen Empires card you could use as a discard outlet for a Thrall Reanimator deck. Alright, let's see. Four packs left. If you're going to draft Fallen Empires, uh, I recommend pairing it either with 4th Edition. Uh, you can pair it with uh, Homelands. I really like Chronicles and 4th Edition, though, personally. Again, you just substitute two packs for one if it's a set with um, eight cards per pack like Fallen Empires. And uh, on the same vein, if you're doing sealed, you would just double it. Uh, you would want 12 packs of Fallen Empires instead of the typical six. Well, there we go. We got through 14 packs. Uh, we didn't find any misprints. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon. I'm going to be doing a old school 93-94 Eternal Central Rules Goblins Tribal Deck Tech. Uh, we're going to talk about budget and non-budget and monocolor and splash and everything in between sideboarding and strategies. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys are having an awesome time playing old school magic and catch you later.